Hi, I'm Monty Twining, and together with my wife, Diane, we founded Roost and Root, and my job in the company is uh, that of a designer and uh, keeping up a little bit with the marketing. But uh, we, like all of our customers, uh, get online and at Amazon or wherever, we'll buy the tie-down uh, kits. The actual panels in the greenhouse are rated for, well, we actually screwed them down to a truck and drove them down the road at 80 miles an hour before some of them failed. That's hurricane force winds. But uh, especially this XL greenhouse, it's so large that I think anything much more than a tropical storm force wind of about 40 miles an hour has the, uh, has the potential to topple it. I think our smaller greenhouse would probably be a little better, but it's very similar. And we recommend that if you live in a place where you expect the winds would ever get much more than about 40 miles an hour to tie the greenhouse down to the ground. Uh, since we don't know where you live, we don't know what kind of ground you have, we don't know whether you're going to pour some sort of a concrete footer or whatever, uh, we provide these D-rings along with the purchase of your greenhouse. And that's what you, we will uh, be using today to actually tie the greenhouse down to the ground. Uh, for the people who do not uh, need to tie it to the ground because they've poured a concrete footer, we don't pre-install the D-rings so that way they, you don't see them sitting on the greenhouse. It's something that you'll do. Uh, you'll just use a regular drill bit. We'll show you in a minute. We give you all the hardware. Uh, and then we're also going to today uh, look at a couple of different kinds of uh, tie-down devices that you could use along with our provided D-rings. So these stakes here are a foot long. They're the same basic stake that this is, but if you've got some topsoil that's a little bit soft, maybe some clay, but it, pretty close to the surface, you start getting into rock, you probably aren't going to be able to drive this all the way into the ground. This shorter 12 inch long stake would be probably something you would use. And you can either use your drill to get it into the ground, or they've given a little driver attachment so that you can kind of screw it into the ground. It has an auger on the end here, and it will bring itself into the ground. Um, and then once it's into the ground, it gives you a place to tie whatever it is that you're tying down. These could be used for like tents. They could be used for canopies. Uh, they could get used for greenhouses, which is kind of how we're planning on using them. These are the 12 inch ones, maybe for ground that gets harder, a, a foot or so underneath, um, but maybe like clay. This is more like sandy loam, something where you're going to be able to drive it a couple of feet down into the ground. This is definitely made for a, a sandy loam or a, a real good topsoil kind of a yard where you can just screw this thing down to the ground. It even comes with uh, the nylon straps that are required. Um, this kit is often sold for like larger pop-up canopies. Uh, it would work perfectly fine for a greenhouse and it would keep you from having to purchase a turnbuckle. Now, where we live, we basically live on a rock and I'm going to have to use this, which is basically like a nail, uh, drive it down with a sledgehammer into the rock. And then it gives a contact place here to be able to affix whatever it is that you're going to put into the D rings that we provide you for your greenhouse. But basically this is called a turnbuckle. We're going to be using it today to tie the stakes themselves to the D-ring and then it'll give us a nice clean looking way to tie down and then I'm going to turn my turnbuckle. Now if all of this hardware you like don't look like you know like what all this hardware looks like on the outside of your greenhouse and you're looking for something a lot more clean then you're going to have to pour some sort of a concrete footer underneath the bottom rail of the greenhouse and then bolt into your footer uh, and that would be a lot cleaner, but today we're going to be showing a way that where somebody who does not want to pour a concrete footer underneath their greenhouse. Uh, we, uh, on our normal size greenhouse, you would probably want to anchor it at a couple of places on the front and a couple of places on the back. On this XL greenhouse, we're going to anchor it in four different places. Uh, we're going to anchor it uh, in these corners. I'll probably pick this double column here is one place that we put an anchor. 
Then we're going to put it, another anchor here on this double column, another anchor on this double column, and finally we'll put an anchor on this double column. And we'll let that be the four places on the front of the greenhouse that we anchor it to the ground. Okay, so the idea here is we're going to be putting this stake in at an angle. Uh, and we're going to expand our turnbuckle to its longest length, which is kind of what I'm doing now. You want to undo it until it's sort of at its longest length. And then you kind of have to sort of visualize where to put your stake to where when it's at an angle, because you want to bring your, in, the, in our case, we're going to put our stake in at an angle. You don't want to like put it straight down. It, it would work if it was straight down. It would work better if it was at an angle. Uh, and, and then just kind of a visualize where you're going to be putting your, the bottom of your turnbuckle. And in this case, it's going to be, you had a pin on you by chance, Kevin? Um, that's all right. And in this case, we're going to be putting our turnbuckle right about here. Okay, the way these D-rings work is we've drilled the holes now to where this device that captures the D-ring goes and we provide these quarter inch long bolts and the idea is that the D-rings get bolted all the way through. We bolt them all the way through so that they'll be strong. Um, they bolt all the way through to the inside uh, of the greenhouse. where we'll go on the back side now and put these T-nuts on. Uh, the T-nuts will be self-locking and it'll allow us to tighten up the front of these bolts. So the T-nuts go on to the back side of the bolts that came through and you just kind of hand tighten them. It's probably gonna be best that you use two people to do this. All right, here we are gonna tighten these bolts against those T-nuts on the back side. You don't need to go crazy tightening them. Do the bottom one now. Kevin's on the other side holding them and we're going to get them tight. And here's this D-ring. These D-rings we have custom built uh, for our coupe. Those bolts are grade five bolts. Each one of these is good for at least 1,200 pounds of pull, which is probably candidly greater than that turnbuckle or the nail that's holding it into the ground. But these D-rings are definitely strong. And then we're going to do what we got to do. I might have to undo this a little bit more to get it to go over the uh, the turnbuckle like that. I don't know that it's going to matter a whole lot whether you put it over or under. You could put it under like that. Either way I think is probably fine. And then you're going to start turning the turnbuckle. And you don't have to use a turnbuckle. You could use a strap. You could use rope. You could use baling wire. I like the turnbuckle. It's just a little cleaner. And this turnbuckle is really deceptively strong. I can already see it moving my nail, but my nail is down into a rock. So I'm going to go ahead and put it down a little tighter. Uh, and then I can sort of bury the head of that nail so I don't step on it or whatever. Uh, and if it loosens up a little bit, all I got to do is turn on my turnbuckle a little bit just to pull it down tighter. But I don't want to pull so hard that I move the greenhouse. I can move the greenhouse with this turnbuckle pretty easily. But now that wall's tied down and I'm going to repeat that step three more times and on the back side of the greenhouse so that if the wind kicks up past about 40 miles an hour, I don't have to worry about this thing going sailing off. Okay, I'm about ready to hammer the very last one down. That took about, I don't know, 15 minutes for Kevin and I to do. Uh, and you're gonna put them in the exact same place on the back walls. Yeah, so this is our standard greenhouse. And uh, well, we're, we're 
breaking our own rule, and we have been now for over a year. Um, this greenhouse is not anchored to the ground. Uh, it's been sitting here uh, kind of in a, uh, a facing south direction, which is what we recommend if you have the solar panel options. Um, and I know it's seen greater than 40 mile an hour winds, but I don't know if you can pan over on it. It's got protection uh, from the south. It's got, it, it, it would be really hard for the wind to get a, a straight shot on this, how we have it positioned. So if you have a greenhouse that's sitting out in the middle of the field, which we have had pictures from our customers where they have greenhouses that are just sitting right out in the middle of a field, I think it's more important that you anchor your greenhouse down. If you've got a greenhouse and it's sitting in a protected area where it's not likely to see very high straight line winds, what I mean by straight line winds, if, if it's a tornado and a tornado hits your greenhouse, it's going to be destroyed. You're going to make an insurance claim. Not, structures aren't going to hold up against a tornado. Straight line winds, uh, you know, like what you're going to get in the, a normal storm or a cold front or something like that. If it can't get a hold of the greenhouse straight on and it's just our standard greenhouse, this greenhouse has done pretty good. I would still anchor it down to be careful. If something happens to this greenhouse, we got a shop, we can fix something. Uh, if you're gonna have a greenhouse and it's gonna be able to see straight line winds of much more than about 40 miles an hour, you're gonna wanna do something to anchor it to ground to be extra careful. But again, the location of your greenhouse makes a difference too. Not only does the size, the XL greenhouse has a much larger surface area on it, so it's going to be able to catch more wind, but also, um, where the greenhouse is physically located. If it's located in a place where the wind can't get at it square on, it probably has a better chance of surviving the high winds.